You are here with me, Kiana Ashley, on the Finally You TV. And thank you for joining me, brothers, for another Men's Mental Health Monday. So today I want to talk about how to combat the pressures that society, your family, your friends place on you, right? Now, if you joined me a lot lot earlier on when I first started these little videos with you guys, I talked a little bit about the victimization of men and how the system and how just our society in general is not setting things up, has never had anything set up to benefit men, to benefit the growth, especially the emotional and mental health and well-being of men, okay? Now, we'll talk a little bit about that today, how to really understand what's going on around you and be aware of it. You might kind of be aware of it in terms of you're faced with it, of course, and you're forced to respond. But have you ever really gave it some thought? Have you really ever took the chance and the opportunity to really understand the obstacles you face because you're a man just simply based on your gender? Okay, there's a lot of gender biased expectations that we place on our little boys from the jump, from the jump to be a certain way because you're a male. Okay, so we'll talk a lot about that. Okay, now let's start from the beginning. All right, because we're trying to understand the mechanics of what you're dealing with. And when you can understand the workings of, of a process, of a system, then you have a better approach from your knowledge base to be able to combat and overcome these obstacles or even just become a little bit more resilient because there's some things you just can't change. There's a lot of stuff that we can't change. We can foster a lot of insight, we can foster a lot of change in hopes that people will follow suit. But in, at the end of the day, men, what we'll talk about today is learning how to respond wisely, to respond appropriately so that you're not acting out in anger or aggression or any of those things that we associate the whole male gender population with. Okay, so if you go way, way back, okay, I'll take you back a long, long ways. I'm talking about medieval kind of times. You know what I mean? Way, way back. And, and re really understand the evolution um, pathologically that we have evolved into, that you have evolved into, okay? Now, back before we had all these wonderful things in place to make it a little bit easier on living our lives, men from the beginning of time have been set up in a good way as protectors. You've been deemed the protectors of the family, the providers, the go out there and bring the bacon home kind of people, okay? You're, you're those, you're that guy, okay? That's who you've always been innately instinctually that's who you are so go out there and it was a moment in time where that was a lot harder to do it's still hard <laughs> but it was a lot harder to go out there and do that okay and so your your response level so far as genetically it's wired you're wired to do these things okay but you're also wired for stress okay and by being wired for stress is that we were faced with obstacles and challenges for everyday survival just to eat just to live right before the evolution of man and technology gave us stoves and refrigerators and you know things grocery stores where we could just go and get things you had to go out there and do that you had to go out there and really really provide okay in the most basic way okay now, during that time period, you have to understand what that was doing genetically, physiologically to your body, okay? So, these are some of the things. I had to bring my notes out for y'all today. So, these are some of the things that have occurred over the evolution of man, okay, over time and how it's hardwired your body for stress, okay? So, while you're, so back in the day, back long in the day, we're out, you're out there, you're providing, you're basically going out there to the wild, to the thick of it and getting what you need for your family, okay? Some of these, the next things I'll talk about is some of the factors that have contributed to that stress levels that you 
still all have embedded into your DNA, okay? So some of the things that have happened is that your heart rate would store to send more blood to your brain to improve quick decision making. So you had to, when you're out there and you're providing, you're out there in the thick of it, you don't have that kind of sense of safety and protection back then, your brain is working feverishly. Your brain was working feverishly to be able to make the smartest and wisest decisions so that you can get back home to your family. You still have that mechanism. You still have that mechanism because every day you go out to the world where it's dangerous, it's still dangerous, just in a different way. You go out into the world and you do your best. You work hard. You're faced with all of these injustices. You're faced with all of these challenges and all the weight of the world on your shoulders. And you got to get back home safe still to, you, to the people you love, right? So that's done something to your heart rate because your heart rate has to climb in order to send more blood to your brain so that you can make good decisions, okay? Also, that blood flow went to the enlargement of your muscles, okay, to provide more strength and speed, right? Blood sugar increased to promote more fuel for you to use for quick energy resources. So while you're out there, while you're out there moving and doing all this physical labor, you need, your body is making sure that it's pumping enough blood sugar, okay, so that you can have the physical ability to handle this laborious day that you're having, that you have every day, okay? Also, your blood will clot more quickly to prevent blood loss sustained from damage while you're out protecting, whatever might have happened. As you know, men have, men are more prone to having dangerous positions, dangerous jobs, okay? which means you still have this same mechanism working for you. You still are faced with very uh, life-threatening situations, okay? Which means that you are still working under these same conditions. It's just a different day. It's just a, and it looks just a little bit different, okay? So what I'm basically saying is that your aggression, your, 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 your stress, it's a byproduct of your environment, your fight or flight response, and you're always fighting. You're always fighting, okay? And it's just unfortunate that you're always fighting for all the wrong things sometimes. You're always fighting for your masculinity. You're always fighting to prove your worth. You're always fighting to prove your love, right? So if you think of what stress really is, all of this is stress-related type of things. And now that we live in a more simpler time, some things have changed and some things have not changed. And we need to understand what things have changed and what things are in place that we don't have any control of, over. And we need to analyze what's tangible. And what's tangible is your response to your environmental stressors, okay? And by environmental stressors, I mean the injustices you face in the judicial system, just the overall expectation of men in general, okay? Because men, we expect you to do it all. <laughs> To do it all and be silent when you are under a certain amount of pressure, under, under a certain amount of stress. We tell you to man up, suck it up. But that's very emotionally demeaning that you have to repress these feelings that are kin to everybody regardless of gender. It's very gender biased to say that men cannot feel. And then yet we wonder why you respond with such aggression anger, hostility, and then what does that, and what happens when you do that? Then we create these labels for you. Men are dangerous. Men are the aggressors. They're always the person that we look at when the domestic abuse is happening. But do we ever look at whether or not that's really who you are? Or is that something that we placed onto you since birth? From birth, we tell our little boys, we treat them different. We don't let them cry. We don't even like it to see little boys cry. We treat that completely different. And you grow up to become men who do not know how to manage your emotions in a way where it's not going to manifest in substance abuse or binge eating because men do suffer from eating disorders just as much as men as women do because that's their way of coping. That's their coping mechanisms. 
because there's no outlet. There's very little resources. I actually did a Google search just the other day on stress and men. And I got a lot of, a lot of material about stress, but in comparison to women. And that's where the disparity keeps happening is that we are comparing your stress levels and your reasons, reasons for your stress, causes of your stress in comparison to women and their stress. Now, believe me, we all have the same. We all stress. We all be stressed out. OK, men and women. It just looks a little differently. It manifests. The stress manifests a little differently. Women, we have that support system. Women, women we have these workshops and these uh, ladies nights and all these lovely uh, outlets that we are able to really truly express ourselves and get that support. Not only do you have an absence of the resources, you also have an inability to express those emotions in a space where people were, it's okay. Right? So why are you so angry? <laughs> why? They wonder why, you know, you have to think about it. Your whole life is a, is a, most of your life is a, is a fight. It's, it's a, it's a, the flight or fight response always on, right? It's always on because your masculinity is always at test and your masculinity is what, that's what defines you as a man. And I get that. We get that. We get that. But we seldom really analyze what goes into the, being a man without placing these very gender biased expectations on you guys. You know, from the court system and the injustice system, that's a whole nother different ballgame. We it's really it's gonna be really hard to infiltrate that to make a change, but it just always baffled me to sit there and watch so much injustice go on. When there's a when most of the judges you face are men. They're men. And that just goes to reinforce that even male judges go to reinforce these gender bias treatments in the judicial system and overly empathize with women. Overly empathize with women. Even men, even you men have that, that thinking, that stinking thinking that women they're so fragile and docile and they can't hurt anybody and you know they're never the aggressor some men have that mentality as well but then there's some men who have been the victim and know that that's not always the case okay and like i said earlier men are labeled as the dangerous ones because you are aggressive because you can be hostile but seldom do they really analyze where this hostility and aggression comes from and why is it so very specific to men, okay? I mean, I'd be pissed off too if I had to carry the weight of my emotions and store them and lock them away in a part of my brain and in my heart and in my spirit that I know, you know, that you can never release it. Where does that energy go? Where does that energy go? It's just in there curling around, swarming around, and it's really collecting a lot of frustration, a lot of lack of feeling like you matter. You're like, you just don't, like you can't be heard. And no matter how hard you try, nobody wants to listen. I can only imagine the anger stemming just from that, you know? So let's move forward with some other not so normal societal norms and expectations for, for men, okay? Now there's unrealistic, unrealistic expectations from women, all right? Unrealistic expectations from women, and I'm, I'm, I might get bit for from my sisters, from my queens, but we gotta talk about it because there are unrealistic expectations on men when it comes to love, relationships, and how women view men, you know, many women, not all, but there's a good portion out there that feel like, men, you got to have it all together, okay? You got to have a nice car, you got to have a good job, you got to dress well, smell well, look well, have a fresh cut every three days. Like, you have all of these expectations set in place for you. You have to manage it all and manage it flawlessly, you know, without really having a moment and we are all entitled to our moment 
I don't know how many of you men actually feel like you get your moment without feeling like you have to kind of like grin and bear it or, you know, suck it up. Or for those of you who, have, who are married, happy wife, happy life. So just pick your battles kind of thing. That's not always the case because you have a voice too. You have feelings too, okay? You have more to offer than what you can bring to the table. And that's something that a lot of people do not, you know, especially women do not focus on. We focus on what you can bring because emotionally we don't think you're inept. We're always saying, oh, men mature a lot, lot slower than women. Why is that? Because from birth, we don't let you mature. We stunt your emotional growth from the jump. And then we shun you for it when you become adult males who are emotionally immature. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. But this is why we talk about these things right now. So you can understand how this is working for you. And if you can overstand it, then you can move forward with making some changes in yourself so that you can deal with all of this pressure in some way that is most adaptive and most healthy for you, okay? Another society's norm is that men feel like they're last. I know you gotta feel like you're last because what is it? Women and children first, right? <laughs> Women and children first. You are always the last one to be thought about as if you're disposable. I know I've talked to a lot of my male clients who have felt that way, who have felt that they have to put everything above their own needs in order to provide, in order to impress this woman, in order to take care of the children to for safety. They got to stand in the, they got to be the first one in front of the bullet pretty much, right? And as much as that is a part of you, and as much as that might be expected of you, you have to understand or you have to ask yourself, are you okay with that? How does that make you feel? Really allow yourself, give yourself permission, like I always tell you, give yourself permission to feel, to think about how you're feeling about certain situations. Because when you're able to tap into yourself, because I tell, just to be honest, it's not my, it might not be a lot of people who's going to ask you how you're feeling. So it's going to be your responsibility to really ask yourself, how do I feel about this? How do I want to react to this? And act on it without any guilt of how you feel about it or what people are saying you should feel or should think or should do about it, okay? So another thing is that men cannot be victims. And I talked about that too um, in an earlier video about the victimization of men, okay? There are very little resources or, or workshops or, or uh, educational material that caters to men who are victims of abuse of rape and I've even heard men um, refer to being raped they can only be raped by men other men don't drop the soap mentality kind of attitude when in fact men can be raped by women and it's 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 become a very skewed idealism of what rape looks like for men okay now, some of that might be lack of education, and a lot of that is just our own interpretations, perspectives, and expectations of what we feel men go through, okay? Men can be raped, and not just by other men, by women too. And some men, many men, have that mentality that if, you know, yeah, I was 11 when I lost my virginity to this older woman who was seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years older, it's almost like a rite of passage, you know, but that's that again, that's that gender biased expectations that we place and that men, sometimes you can reinforce it on yourself, but it's only because it's learned behavior. It's a learned, something that's been passed down to you, not just genetically, not just observational wise, but it's just been passed down through generations that you, that's a rite of passage to have your virginity taken or to have sex with an older woman that's obviously <laughs> illegal to do if given the age difference okay it can be done and if we are able to change that perspective you can look at it in a more healthy way and you'll feel more worthy you'll feel more defined as a man you'll feel a lot more a lot less pressure to operate as a man because all that is is pressure from from the society okay so again not only do you 
are you unable to be the victim? There's a stigma for male survivors, people, the men who have been victims. What do they get? Just, I can only imagine when you are the victim and no one hears your cry. Where's the frustration? Where's, where's the absolute anger towards yourself, towards society, towards people who you want to talk to but can't? That's where the anger comes from. That's the source of the male aggression, okay? And one most important thing I want to mention is that men are perceived as more advantaged in comparison to women. You know, you get higher pay, you could, do, you know, you don't have to have the babies, you get to just do what you want to do, you know. And that's not always the case because even when a man is disadvantaged, even in the, <laughs> even still, are you looked at as an advantage gender in comparison to your female counterparts, okay? You face more rejection, you face a lot more male toxicity attitudes towards you. There's a lot that goes into it. And I'm not saying women don't have their own challenges, but there are specific and very different set of challenges. And yours is a very specific to your gender. It does not mean either one is any more or less important. But what it means is that you are important as well and that you have a voice and that you have emotions and that there needs to be an outlet for those built up, pent up hostility because at the end of it, is just a little boy who wanted to be hugged at the end of it it's just a little boy who wanted to really tell that girl he like her <laughs> and not be hurt and then we wonder like why do men really internalize their hurt when they're rejected from a woman or when they get their heart broken because there was nobody teaching you how to deal with those emotions you are emotionally inept to deal accordingly in the most adaptive coping ways to responses where it evokes an emotional response from you. So I, we really do label you in a bad way when it all comes from a very lonely place, right? So let's talk about a little bit of, now that you understand, okay? I wanna talk a little bit about how to combat those stresses because like I said, it's a lot out there. It's a lot to change everybody's mind. But what you can start with is changing yourself, changing your views, getting those resources, getting this knowledge, and getting the healing you need. Because once you understand, you can approach it a lot differently. And maybe it can relieve some of the stress that you're feeling. Okay? So these are some ways I always refer, I recommend to my male clients when they are dealing with very, um, uh, a lot of stress, especially when it's in relation to their gender, okay? So definitely work out. It helps relieve some of that pent up tension, okay? For those of you that are working out, I know what you, I know many of the men that I know work out say that they feel a lot of release from that anger and that tension when they work out. So do work out, do try to eat and sleep well, okay? Meditate, meditate. Because what meditation is going to do for you specifically, man, is that it's going to allow you to get in tune with that voice, the voice that has always been repressed, that little boy who could not cry, the little boy who could not love and hug the way he really wanted to with all his heart. That's going to teach you to do that because you need to get in tune with that voice because you have one and to be powerful in that voice, okay? Regardless of if there's an outlet or not, regardless if anybody's going to respond to it, you need to be in tune with you, okay? Resolve sources of your stress. Try to resolve the sources of your stress, okay? And we talked about this before in earlier videos. Really figure out what's going on with you. And again, the meditation is what's going to help facilitate that process. Is understanding that you have these feelings there and then doing a lot of introspection to see the origin, the origin of these particular feelings, whether that's doing it by yourself, whether that's bouncing it off a friend who you trust, whether that's going to see a therapist like myself, whatever it might be, you have to work through those feelings. You have to process them and find out where they're coming from, okay? And that's very essential if you want long-term um, 
satisfaction and relief from those stresses, okay? Um, avoid stressful situations if you can, okay? Again, these are difficult. It might be difficult to do, you know, but it's something that you know you need to do. Avoid stressful situations. Accept what you cannot change. Accept what you cannot change. And for everything else, just know you overstand it now. Because when you overstand it, you, you develop a tolerance for things because you know. You already know it through and through. And you know how to respond to it accordingly. Okay? Don't take on more than you can handle. Don't take on more than you can handle. Yes, we expect you to do everything and have it all. To hell with the expectations. Do not bite off more than you can chew. It's not an admission of weakness. It is not a sign of you not being able to man up and do and take care of everything you need to take care of. I've seen men work themselves to the bone. And by the, I mean to the bone, you know, and not take care of themselves first. Okay. You need to take care of yourself, whether that's going away for a while, hanging out with the fellas, whatever that is for you, do it. And acknowledge victories. Not everybody's going to pat you on the back and say, good job. But take the time out to give yourself credit for the man that you are and for the man that you are still trying to become. Because you deserve that. And so we're all a work in progress and definitely in the society and the weight that you are under, every little victory counts, okay? So definitely give yourself that TLC because you need TLC too, all right? So men, thank you for joining me for this wonderful Men's Mental Health Monday. If you are combating some stress that you feel like you just can't handle on your own, please feel free to visit my website at itransformyoucoaching.com and book a healing session with me. Talk through it with someone because you need to. It's going to help you in the long run to process those pent up emotions. You have a lot to unpack. You have a lot to unpack. And sometimes it works to have someone help you take some things out of that little bag you got, okay? So definitely visit my website and book your healing sessions, okay, men? And take care of yourselves, okay? You deserve that. And be well.